what you're doing after this. I am totally kidding. I want to say what's up to you, man of church, wherever you are along the military highway. I'm Riley. I'm here with Tasha. And I want to say welcome to all of our microsites. So that's a shout out to everyone joining us in Fort Johnson, Louisiana. Got to welcome everyone here in the Virginia. So that's a shout out to Fort Greg Adams, Williamsburg, Virginia Beach. Uh, where are we at? Where else are we? Um, Williamsburg? Chesapeake. Chesapeake, our yeah. microsite at night. Three weeks in, we're also in Bangladesh, the Republic of Korea, New York, Pennsylvania, and the USS Roosevelt. We're so glad to have you here. And uh, we're picking up right where we left off um, in our study, week three of Parenting on Purpose. Yep, and in this series, we're looking at God's design for humanity and how that plan um, is both individual and collective. Yeah, and it's, it's so amazing when you really look at what the Bible says about our purpose, our origin, our design, how we're meant to live out as individuals, um, the fact that God made us single, but made us for community. And uh, right out the gate, we get to see this amazing storytelling, this, th this point that I think all of Scripture is pointing towards when it talks about community. Um, we'll just be blunt and say it. You're meant to be in a small group. Um, a small group is where we go from being followers of Jesus to actually being disciples of Jesus. It's where we go from being another face in the crowd to, to actually being the church. It's where we function and grow into all he has for us. And again, last week we did um, a talk on relationships. Uh, so I want to encourage you, if you're behind, you can always, right here on our YouTube channel, you can go back and watch week one, week two. And uh, do us a huge favor if you could like, share, subscribe, and know what the influencers say. I think I think they say stuff like that. So, how about we jump back in, babe? We'll start today by going right back to Genesis. But before we do, we want to remind you, like we've been doing throughout the rest of the series, of how to approach your Bible. And this is especially for those of us who are new to reading the Bible. We have to remember that the Bible isn't a textbook. It's not a history book. It's not a science book. But while it does contain those things, it's not the way that it's written to be. So we can't study it that way. Instead, we should approach the Bible to experience God, to have an encounter with Him. Mm. And remember that the every word in the Bible is God-breathed. So when we read our Bibles, we shouldn't bring our presuppositions when we come into the Bible and read it. Um, but we should examine what it is that God is saying to us. Amen. So good. So let's go to Genesis chapter 2, um, and I'll pick it up in verse 23, which says, Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Uh, and what I love about this, if you like, again, zoom back and look at the Hebrew here, um, the first words that human beings exchange to each other. So Adam sees Eve. This man is singing like this is some straight up bone thugs and you know, like bone, bone. Like that's that's what's happening. He's so enamored with this amazing person that God's brought into his life that his first words are literally a song to her. And um, I, I know like. When we talk about this, we can again see the reality that God created us for relationships and the height, like the pinnacle, the, the Cadillac. Um, I like cars and, you know, some cars are just like, you know, this is good. And then some have all the bells and whistles. Um, and that's what marriage is. Um, again, one man, one woman, one life, one covenant with God. That's the Cadillac of relationships. That's the, the picture that God wants to reveal who he is, his relationship. Um, even Jesus' relationship to the church is revealed through marriage. That's God's ideal. Um, and I know pastors, we preach that, we talk about that. But the reality is, is we don't measure up to the ideals. Uh, Paul even talks about this in Romans chapter 5, where each of us, we're all sinners, and thankfully Christ died for us while we were sinners. So even though we don't measure up to the ideals, even though my life isn't perfect, God is the one who initiates relationship with us. Um, kind of how he spoke to the void, spoke to nothing, and something came out. God always initiates. And so because we all have different stories, we can't say that life is black and white. Mm. We all have different experiences and circumstances in life. And that's what makes us all unique. 
At the same time, the Bible and its principles are very black and white. That's right. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us to apply His Word into our lives. We need His wisdom. We're calling today's message, How to Do Marriage Even If You Aren't. Mm. Um, because regardless of where you are in life, we've all been touched or impacted by marriage in some way. Whether you're married, single, single for a season, or remarried, um, even divorced, we need to understand that God has the perfect plan for our lives, yeah. and He invites us to walk in it. Absolutely. You know, one thing I love just about that picture, um, you were a wife long before you were my wife. Um, I think about how the Bible teaches that he who finds a wife finds a good thing. And that really informs us then as a guy, I should carry myself like a husband. Um, as, as a lady, you carry yourself like a wife. And if God calls you to a human marriage relationship, then you're ready for it. Um, and jumping right back into verse 24, therefore, this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. Um, and just to be clear, again, we're going to keep it PG. Um, the Bible's talking about human sexuality right here. Um, this is where we aggregate all of our theology, our, our foundation on this gift that God has given for marriage. Um, our sexuality is to be practiced within the covenant of marriage. One man, one woman, one lifetime. Now, Genesis is the foundation for the marriage, um, but there's more. Uh, I love that we get the whole Bible. Um, we get to glean from some things that Paul wrote to churches. And so I want to take us to the New Testament, if we could, uh, to see some things where he really helps us with this um, analogy. He helps us with this picture of a marriage being like Jesus and his bride, the church. Um, and so I think we can discover some powerful insight when we examine the New Testament. We're going to jump into Ephesians 5 in just a bit, but before we do, we need to um, get some background and see um, what was going on in this city when Paul wrote this letter. Mm -hmm. We have to understand um, that about this city of Ephesus, they were a city that was way out there. There was a lot of self-expression and idol worship. They had a Greek goddess, Artemis, whom the Romans called Diana. Mm. And this was a cult that was led by a female. And the worship of this goddess was widely spread throughout their city. The culture and the people there, they were deeply influenced by these pagan practices. All this explains why Paul writes to them concerning what true Christian worship of the one true God is. Yeah, so, so before you get into the Bible, like... I just want to like say what I heard you saying. So there's this culture that's extremely liberal, um, hyper feminism going on here, where ladies, kids, there's a class system. So you have the elite, you have the working poor, you have the poor poor. Everything's like separated, um, and they worship this dirty Diana. Um, so this this is like hot girl summer on fire, um, where Paul is then going to write to men and to women, to husbands and wives, how to mutually submit to each other. Um, that's different because the whole idea of marriage in, in this culture, um, it was just for procreation. Um, you wouldn't go to your marriage for wisdom or advice or comfort or, or friendship, uh, which is so foreign um, from the original design that God has for us. So. Let's look at Ephesians 5, verse 22 through 33. And we'll read this slow and unpack it verse by verse. So verse 22, Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. And I think this word submit kind of scares some women or maybe even raises some questions. But one way to submit to our husbands is to bring all of our gifts, all of our wisdom, all of our insight, and our connection to God into the marriage. He's not saying that you're less than. Uh, what Paul is telling the women to do is to exercise their right, right, that they have a voice. Because during this time, they didn't have that anywhere else. Yeah, and, you know, the letters, a lot of what we have in our New Testament, they're called circular letters, which means as Paul wrote to one church, the expectation was that letter would then be delivered, passed to every church. And so Paul's writing this letter, assuming that they've read his letter 
of Galatians, um, which talks about equality, um, which talks about like, you know, there being no Jew nor Greek and, and all those things that we have in Jesus. And so we're basically getting this topic of, hey, you're equal. Here's how to be equal in light of the kingdom. Verse 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Headship here means protection and covering. So guys, it's your job to protect, to love, and to provide for mm. your wives. Now, if you're looking to get married and you're not willing to fight for your wife, make some sacrifices, or have a job, you're probably not ready to get married. Don't, don't do it. Um, <laughs> don't and if you come it. into this marriage without those things, you can find out real quick. You can find out. <laughs> you can sure find out. <laughs> <laughs> but notice also that headship here is different from kingship. Mm. Yes, husbands, you are leaders in the home, but not lords. That's good. That's such a good word. I think of um, just even the picture you see in Jesus. Um, it, it says, husbands, love your wife like Christ loved the church. Um, and that speaks to this submission. It speaks to laying down his life. In fact, you want to jump back into verse 26. Verse 24. Sorry, 24. You're right. My bad. Now, so okay. That's my bad. <laughs> Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Mm. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And this goes back to what I mentioned before. As wives, we're to bring all of our gifts to the marriage, uh, to bring all that we have been gifted by God into the marriage. Mm -hmm. And so, guys, it's your job to lay down your lives. This requires sacrifice, just like Christ sacrificed himself for us. Think about the kind of love and sacrifice that was. It's a love that's rare and powerful. Mm -hmm. Verse 26, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Yeah, if I can jump in right there, um, I, I got to warn everybody. Um, so I get to do premarital counseling. I also get to do like postmarital counseling, um, help people navigate all types of situations. And um, guys, I, I'm, I'm tough on the guy. And, and it's because of what we read right here. Like, like Christ loves the church. And this gift, this, this authority, this, this opportunity God's given guys to wash our girls with our words. Um, like, I just want to encourage you, speak life into your relationships. If you want to see something play out, use your words. Again, made in God's image. How did he shape the world? How did he create things around him? He spoke and it was. Um, in the same way, Jesus presents his wife, his bride, his church, which is us. We're people, and we're sinful, and we're messy. He presents us blameless. If you look at the garden, Adam and Eve mess up. God calls Adam to the carpet because he's responsible. And he immediately says, uh, the woman you gave me. And then what does she do? Uh, the serpent. Like, no, don't blame shift. Lean into the responsibility. Man up. That's what Jesus would do. In fact, that's why he went to cross um, to redeem us. So uh, this love, like Tasha said, is very different. Verse 29, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Because we are members of his body, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Here he restates Genesis that we read earlier, telling them that marriage is going to take all of you. It's not 50-50, mm -hmm. but 100 and 100. That's right. It's giving all that you've got, all your attention, all your love, all your care. And this includes also 100% of your sexual expression. It's 100 from both husband and wife. Come on. Verse 32. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. So love and respect, that's what it comes down to. Come on. Uh, notice also that it doesn't say to love and respect if they deserve it. Ooh, I'm preach that. <laughs> you give your love and respect even when they don't deserve it. It yeah. should be unconditional. That's right. 
The mystery and beauty of marriage is the representation of Christ's relationship with his church. That's so good, man. So um, maybe we shift here, like make this practical. I think uh, if you're taking notes, um, I want to arm you with this. Uh, you need to act on purpose. Um, one of the Christian words that used to trigger me all the time, like I feel like we say intentional too much. Uh, so I want to give you act on purpose uh, because you need to have a plan, but you need to actually execute your plan. Don't just talk about, okay, I want to make my marriage better. Or don't just talk about, I need to work on me. Like if you need therapy, go meet with a therapist, like put it on your calendar. If you need a small group for accountability, maybe you're you know, battling some form of addiction, great news, the gospel still works. Like the blood of Jesus still works. He will renew you, he will transform you, and he does that in small groups. Um, so we have a bunch of great small groups for marriages, for kids, for Bible studies, for walking into freedom from addiction. So go to our website, download our app, do whatever you have to do to act on purpose because purposeful action, um, again, not just words, that's what actually helps us reach our goals and accomplish the things that God's placed on our hearts. Um, and so again, don't, don't leave marriage to chance. Um, again, Tasha mentioned no matter what season of life you're in, um, have a plan and act on that plan, whether you're married or not. The second application is that uh, we have to bring our best. Like I've said before, it's all in, 100%. Mm. The teaching that marriage is 50-50 is false. You have to bring all of you into the marriage. Uh -huh. And this makes sense because walking the walk of Christianity is a trade. It's all of me for all of Jesus. That's right. It's dying to self. And marriage is a model of this. So it involves laying down all of you to be in relationship. Mm. Our, our marriages and our relationships are meant to model the new creation to the world. We are a taste of the things to come when Jesus returns. So good. Yeah, one of my favorite quotes about marriage is, um, it says, if you want to serve Jesus, stay single. If you want to be like Jesus, get married. <laughs> and I think all my married people, y'all just know what that means. Um, but I, I love uh, what Tosh said about all in 100% because um, the picture that I like to live off of when it comes to our marriage is um, like tandem divers. Um, so I got to serve with some Navy guys and, you know, they scuba gear and um, a tandem diver, like they're actually connected by their, they share the same oxygen tank. And so the expectation is we both have to make it in order to survive. So I need you, which means if you're only bringing 30%, I'm bringing 70. Cause there may be a moment in our life where I'm only bringing 10 and she's got to bring 90, but we're all in together. And the last thing we want to do is to sever that line. Um, I think that would uh, be devastating, um, but God has grace and he can help navigate you if you're there, which leads us um, really to, I think, the, the biggest application we have for you. Um, our third application to help you have a healthy marriage, to help you in all of your relationships, is you have to get with God. Um, many of you know I lead a small group called Up Before the Enemy. Um, and yes, I do that once a week with some other dudes. It's just fun to uh, get some guys around a cup of coffee and God's word. Um, but I meet with God every day. Um, in fact, my rhythm is, I start my identity, is just being his son. I got to carve out time just to get alone with God. And from that place, now my love, his love for me is kind of giving me this fuel, this, this momentum. I'm starting with some wins. You know, maybe I was in the weight room, got his word, but listened to some worship music. Then I lean into my role as being a husband, um, this responsibility that I, that I get to steward. Um, and from there, then our love creates the foundation in which I get to be a father. We get to deal with our crazy kids. They're starting their day and getting ready for school and all that fun stuff. And then I go to work. Um, and at the end of my work day, again, fueled by all of this love, I work that in reverse. I come back home to be dad again. Uh, we put the kids to bed so I can be husband. Come on, somebody. Um, but then it's me and God uh, starting the day just like we, or ending the day just like we started it. It's like that ancient rhythm, rest into work through the love we find in our relationships. Um, so again, I think getting alone with God is, is really the key to lean into the wisdom that we both get 
from both of our individual relationships with God. So we stress the importance today about marriage because understanding God's plan for marriage is critical whatever season you're in. Mm. When we understand God's plan for our marriage and walk it out, only then can we experience the joy and fulfillment that God designed for us to have in a marriage. Amen. Yeah, we're really... Um we're really not telling you how to do marriage. That's kind of the funny part. Um, what we're telling you is if you want to know how to do marriage, if you want to know how to do any relationship, whether you're a parent, whether you're a child, you need God. You need the person of the Holy Spirit operating in and through your life. And so maybe we'll just camp out there um, for the next few minutes and, and let's pray together and let's connect with the person of God. Uh, so in this moment, Lord, we love you. Uh, we're, we're so thankful that, that you created us for relationships, for a relationship with you. Um, you created us for community. And so in this moment, um, for those of us who are in marriage covenants, um, God, we submit those to you. Uh, we're not trying to um, fix our own marriages. Um, but what we do is we bring things to Jesus. Um, you're the one who fixes. You're the one who makes new. Uh, for those of us who are um, living like we're married, um, meaning that we're going to be a husband, we're going to be a wife until God brings us that other person, um, give us the grace to do that. Um, help us in our covenant commitments with you, Jesus, um, in order to obey your word, in order to value the opportunity that we have to get with God, um, to find friends in small groups, and to advance your kingdom here on the earth. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you could, church, uh, just keep your head bowed. One more moment, one more prayer. Um, I mean, we mentioned this in the message, um, that, that little hint towards Romans. Like, while we were sinners, that's when God, when Jesus died for us. He lived a perfect life. He paid the price for your sin like Christ loved the church. He laid down his life to be in relationship with you. So the response to that type of love, the response to the reality of who he is, is we give him our lives. If that's you today, if you're like, yeah, I think I need to give Jesus my life. I, I want to give Jesus my life. Maybe you walked away from that relationship with him and you want to come back. Um, in this moment, here and now, I want to lead you in a prayer. Uh, but we're not going to leave you alone. Again, you're made for community. So we, as a spiritual family, we're gonna pray this prayer with you wherever you are right now. So simply repeat after me and say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I'm a sinner, but I confess my sin. I repent and I choose you. Come into my heart and be the Lord of my life. And today is a new day in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, we are so excited for you in fact you can let our team know again we're standing by we'll be in the chat we'll be in the comments we want to help you take next steps help you find some friends maybe a small group near you or you can get plugged into one of our microsites so just let us know right there in the chat and we'll see you back here next sunday <laughs>